Now I would like to ask Mr. Johan Vive to come to the podium to say a few words. He is the Deputy Chief of Mission at the Embassy of Norway. Please welcome him. Good evening, everybody, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I am deeply honored and also a bit uh, humbled to have been asked today by the Ruby Forum and the Turkic American Alliance to say a few words on the importance of unity and diversity in the light of the recent attacks in Norway. Let me first thank the American government and the people and other governments here represented for their condolences and massive support after the horrific events on July 22nd in Oslo and the island of Utøya. Special thanks to the Rumi Forum, who also sent messages of support. We have been going through a very tough period of national uh, mourning that culminated yesterday in a national memorial event with the, fam with the families of the victims. Many other countries have experienced uh, larger terrorist attacks than this one in Norway, but for a small <coughs> nation like Norway, that until July 22nd had been spared from terror, it had an immense uh, impact. Every community, every county was struck. Our Muslim community was also hit, and Turkish Foreign Minister Davutoglu attended the funeral of one young girl of Turkish descent who was brutally killed at Utøya while exercising her political rights. Emerging from all this grief, we do, however, see some hope. And uh, needless to say, uh, this event, we still really haven't come to terms with it in Norway but at least I think there are some reflections we can make already. And one element of hope I see is that the sense of national unity has maybe never been stronger than today. I was myself in Norway with my family during the attack and in the days that followed, and participated with my family in the biggest demonstration ever, downtown Oslo. It was the most moving public event I've ever participated in. And best of all, this demonstration was a spontaneous act put together by a private citizen who used social media to call people to action. We were more than 200,000 people. Everybody carried roses. And when they held them up in the air, Oslo was transformed into a sea of flowers. This was a very powerful and universal symbol of our support to the families of the victims our total rejection of the terrorists, but also our common wish to protect and strengthen our democracy and the integration of all members of our community. People did not respond with a wish for vengeance, but with a wish for a society where we take better care of each other across social and cultural divides. Another element of hope that I see is that participation, political participation, has acquired a whole new meaning in Norwegian society after the attacks. People seem to understand now that even in a peaceful and well-established democracy, you cannot take your civil rights for granted. More people, especially young people, are now joining political parties and other organizations. And in the upcoming elections next month, we are expecting very high levels of participation. It has been especially moving to listen to young activists that survived the massacre at the island, who feel more committed now than ever to help making this world a better place. They have not, scared, they have not been scared off by the brutal attack, fortunately. <coughs> uh, the people of Norway and the government have also been very clear that we do not wish to let this terrorist act force us into a more closed society where politicians and democratic institutions are separated from the people through heavy security. Which, of course, is a very difficult choice because it may seem almost a bit naive, but uh, it's, it's something that has come very strongly through. I would say it also been a time for reflection about how we handle diversity in our country. Norway is known for its emphasis on equality, but we have a lot to learn when it comes to handling <coughs> diversity. Immigration, cultural, and religious diversity are fairly recent phenomena in Norway. 
economic integration has gone fairly well because we are living in a very privileged economic situation. But we definitely could do a better job when it comes to including newcomers in what we now call the Norwegian uh, we, the new we, which uh, was also alluded to in your intervention. We need to acknowledge that there is opposition to immigration in our society, and we need to deal with it. We believe that those who experience fear of the unknown, of new religions, new people, should come forward and express it. But the recent attacks have also shown the dangers of confining this kind of debate to secretive internet communities where virtual wor wor worlds of senseless hatred are created. We need an open debate where we can be able to keep everybody accountable for what they are saying and what they are expressing. Uh, just as we recognize the need for an open national dialogue on diversity, we believe that we also need a more open international dialogue on the issues that divide the world. In the last decade, many seem to believe that diplomacy and dialogue are tools of limited utility, and that talking to a group or country whose ideas and values we do not share is the same as legitimizing their goals and ideology. Some even see dialogue as a sign of moral and military weakness. Talk, of course, cannot sell, solve every conflict or replace uh, military power. Uh, Norway also participates in, in international military operations to establish peace when it's needed. <coughs> dialogue often needs to be combined with pressure of some kind, but channels for dialogue should always be kept open. We strongly believe that skillful engagement holds the possibility of moderating policies and behavior around the world. So, uh, and these things have been very important in Norwegian uh, foreign policy in the later years. And I would say that definitely the attacks that occurred now this summer have very much strengthened our belief, belief in, in this tool of international diplomacy. So for this reason, I'm very happy to be here tonight and, and to be able to share this entire view with all of you and also to express the support for the values that the uh, group represents and also the Turkic and American alliance. So thank you so much.